Hello and welcome to Healing Thursday. Healing Thursday, Healing Thursday, Healing, Healing, Healing Thursday. I worked all day on that tune. What do you think? That's a weird sound. My stomach makes weird sounds when I sit down. When I'm standing up, my bum makes weird sounds. It's just, I can't win. Now it's a bit of both. Vinny, can't believe you just did that. Whew. So, hello, welcome to uh, me. My name's Jason Newland. My website's jasonnewland.com. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Just to let you know that I have a YouTube channel, which you can, well, every time I do these recordings, okay, from now on anyway, but I will be uploading a 10 hour version onto my YouTube channel without music. So you'll have the um, positive stuff after the recording so affirmations counting down body scan all those kinds of things for for what up to 10 hours so maybe eight and a half hours or nine hours after the recording so you can listen all night long if you want there Okay, what else? Oh yeah, I have a Facebook page, uh, which or Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. So please join if you if it's only here for people that really enjoy what I do. So it's it's not for the casual listener. It's for people that really, you know, are interested in what I'm doing and use these recordings or videos or whatever regularly because one of the benefits you can get is to ask me questions on there and I do a Q&A Friday every week every Friday in fact and you can actually ask me questions that I can answer on Q&A Friday and the same is this week so I've just posted on there if you've got any questions in fact, if you have any questions, you're also welcome to ask them on here as well, on YouTube. On here, this is everywhere, but on YouTube's another place you could post a question if you want. But the best way to do it is just to join the Facebook group, Jason Newland's Boring Group, which in some ways isn't the most positive title, is it? But those that listen to me, you, you know what it means. Because we all know I'm really exciting, but... Hey, Finny. Finny's been a bit weird. He's been in bed pretty much all day long. The only reason he's in here with me now is because I've closed the door. And whenever I turn the recording equipment on, he comes in there. Like, every single time. And I've closed the door so he can't... Well, hopefully he can't bark at every single door creak outside so let's say what's the latest well I got up this morning you know I, I normally get up quite early an early riser as it were sometimes I wake up before I wake up if you know what I mean I rise before I rise but uh, today just after four o'clock in the morning. Got up out of bed. I edited yesterday's recording. Did all that stuff. And I was... I got up too early, to be honest. I was falling asleep doing it. And eventually... Uh, I managed to finish it. Upload it and... Decided, you know, it's time to then go and have my breakfast. So I... Cl 
basically because so I've got two bowls. This is this is my life. I've got two breakfast bowls. I've got one cup. There's two now, but one's not mine. That's what's her name's, his mum's. So she left it here the other day. Uh, what else have I got? One plate. I don't know how. I used to have, since, since I moved here, I've had two sets of two sets of plates, two sets of cutlery. Like, you know, six dishes, six plates, six little plates, six sauces, six cups. And I just got through them. I don't quite know how. So, so anyway, I wash up the dish that the... I leave the bowl to soak overnight. I usually leave both of them to soak overnight. And then I wash one up. Unless I've already washed it up, then I just, what I do is I rinse it out because I just can't stop myself. I can't pick a dish up and use it or a cup without rinsing it out, even if it's clean. Just, just kind of have to do that. As well as cutlery, have to rinse it under the cold tap. Uh, so, anyway, I boil a kettle. Well, I boil the water in the kettle, using the kettle. And then I pour the milk into the bowl, put it into the microwave, because I, I put the, the bowl of milk in the microwave for about two and a half minutes. And that's going to be for my ready brick. Then I go into the bathroom. And at this point, I try and put the tea bag in a teacup. Well, it's kind of like a mug and it's blue and I pour the hot water into the kettle into the the cup mug thing so I let that brew while the microwave is you know doing its thing with the milk I then go into the bathroom I clean my teeth I do all that stuff, face wipes and stuff, you know, get all the makeup off. And then I usually hear the ding. So I'm in the bathroom probably, I don't know, four or five minutes. I don't know where the time goes really. So then I come out, generally I close the door. I leave the light on though because the light the light switch makes a lot of noise. It's is I mean, the bathroom's the most echoiest room, isn't it? I mean, unless you live in a mansion, then I guess all the rooms are echoey. But I don't currently live in a mansion. But it's very echoey. So, and it's because it's so early in the morning, I don't want to disturb the neighbours. So I leave the light on until it's a, a better time to turn it off. I go into the kitchen and I get the milk out of the microwave. I usually you know, keep it in the bowl. It's too hot otherwise. And then I pour the mic, the, the what's it? No, no, actually, no, 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 no. I put the milk, I get the milk out of the fridge, if unless I've left it out. I pour a little dash of milk into the tea and then I just make the tea and get rid of the tea bag chuck it out the window and then with the spoon I mix in the ready brick into the milk then I add some raisins or some dried fruit and then I take it into the bedroom no the bedroom the living room but I do turn the light off in the kitchen because that's just a normal switch I don't know why all the switches aren't just like that well, they are, except the bathroom. Why not just have a switch outside the bathroom, like they do in hotels? Well, some some places have it. Do you reckon it's because families, they realise that if you do that, people turn the light off when you're in the bathroom? Like if you're in a hotel room, someone's not going to do that if you're in there on your own. But if you've got a kid or if you've got someone that's just be naughty thinks it's funny and you're in the dark in the bath or in you know you can't see what you're doing 
So maybe that's why they have the, the light in the bathroom. I don't know. Well, on this occasion, and I'm going to the, the, the living room, turn the TV on, I'll check up on the news or go onto YouTube to see what's new, and I have my breakfast. And then, then I'll probably, after about half an hour, maybe an hour, I'll do the, what's it, to make the image for the podcast that I've just edited and uploaded. And I will then share it onto Facebook. And usually later on, not straight away, maybe an hour later, maybe a couple of hours later, I will make the video for YouTube and upload that. It's now a bit more time consuming to do the video because I've got the 10 hours long, but it's okay. It's, there's reason behind what I'm doing. All the videos, apart from the archives, in the future will be 10 hours long. That's the plan. And they're all dark screen as well. So the, there's initial, an initial image. Then it goes to dark screen after 10 seconds. So you can watch on YouTube and not have a glare in your face. So you can listen rather on YouTube. And just be able to listen in your bedroom or without any lights on. And it's just a dark screen. After 10 seconds. So, um, this morning, probably, it's probably gone five o'clock, or maybe it was, no, maybe, maybe it wasn't, I lose track of the time, anyway, I put the, the milk in, so I, I, you know, do the kettle like normal, pour the hot water out onto the, into the cup, with the tea bag in, Put the milk into the bowl, put the bowl into the microwave, put it on for two and a half minutes, you know, set it for two and a half minutes. Then I walk into the bathroom and I don't think, I'm not sure if I even got into the bathroom and all the lights went out. And I thought, oh, 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 like, what's going on? First of all, I thought, oh, I've um, tripped the switch or whatever it's called. You know, the fuse is tripped. It's over. Because I had that before with a kettle. It kept tripping the... Is it called tripping the switch? So what I have to do is go into the storage room. And that's where the... I don't know what you call it, the electrical circuitry thing is, and you have to like push the thing up, and it turns everything on again. Now for the first, probably six years of living here, I would go in there, holding my phone up for the light, trying to see what I'm doing, not realizing that actually there's a light on, there's a light in, the storage room, which is not connected to the same circuit, specifically so you could go in there and turn it on and see what you're doing. <laughs> it's it, That only happened because cause normally, because I've had a few power cuts over the years and I've tripped the switch a few times. But on this occasion back then, I, I've always, because I've always been in a living room, it's happened or in the kitchen. So I've just gone into the storage room and it's usually it's been a trip switch. Uh, there's been probably three power cuts probably previous to this. Anyway, I went into the storage room on that occasion. I was near the front door and the lights went out. So I, I checked the light. So I always check the lights, you see. So if I'm in the living room, I check the light. It's not working. Because sometimes it go, it's gone out during the day, so it's, the TV's gone off, like, what's going on? 
or I try the the kitchen light or the bathroom light or the bedroom light. But in this occasion, I went in and I tried the the storage room light, and it came on. And I thought, "Whoa, that's weird. How come it can't? You know, it must be the TV. No, it must be this. I don't know. I just like it confused me." And I was trying all the other lights and nothing came on. And like, how can that light be on? And none of the other lights are on. So I went into the fuse box. Fuse box, that's it. The box where the fuses are. I guess that should be memorable. And I pushed it up and it came on. And I was like, wow, okay, all these years. I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but it has happened quite a few times with a fuse box probably 20 odd times maybe more anyway that's when I know the difference between the fuse going and an actual power cut because that the light in that storage room doesn't come on when there's a power cut and if it's in the night time the hallway lights are off as well like outside so it was a power cut I couldn't, I'm like, what? A weird time to have a power cut. I mean, you know, there has been times when I've woken up and the, the my, what was it, the, the microwave's flashing and the washing machine lights are on. That happens when there's a power cut because it comes on and it just stays flashing or whatever. So that's, yeah, it used to be when I had an electric, was it um, a digital clock, you know, with the lights, and it used to end up flashing and the alarm wouldn't come on. And, yeah, so that, I haven't had one of them for, wow. The last time I can remember having a digital clock, it's 2003. Because I used to wake up to the radio yeah, the radio used to wake me up when I was working in insurance. And I mean, I might have, no, I think I did have one in 2005, maybe 2007. Unless I, yeah, probably did, yeah. But I remember 2003 waking up and I kept hearing darkness or the darkness song. I believe in a thing called love. I believe in a thing called love. That, that song and it was like wow just really liked the song and just kept waking up to it so I didn't know what to do because it was dark outside it was dark inside I do have my torch so that's handy um, over the fence all the lights were on well, the hallway lights, so they weren't affected. Across the road, the lights were on, so they weren't affected. But the streets, the street lights were off, but the street lights are off anyway after midnight or something, either one o'clock or midnight, because, you know, obviously between one and one o'clock after midnight, that's the safest time for people to walk around, isn't it? <laughs> you don't need, don't need street lights at that time. That's because that's the that's best time for people to walk around. So, um, I didn't know what to do. Because the, the milk was, it probably had 30 seconds of heat, so it wasn't ready. And I thought, even if it was ready, would I sit here in the dark? Eating, I mean, the tea was fine. The cup of tea was very, very well ready. It was, you know, it was made. I just stood here and I thought, well, what I'll do, let's find out if something's going on. You know, just, this is weird. And, of course, I couldn't use the internet on my phone, which I knew because the electricity, you know, internet is, is plugged into electricity. However... The data on my phone, on my mobile phone, 
has got nothing to do with the electricity for this building. Yet, yet, the data would not use, the internet would not work. Couldn't believe it. The, the inter, honestly, the internet would not work without the electricity being on. And it made no sense whatsoever. Because even at the moment, I've got the Wi-Fi off. Okay, Wi-Fi off. Bluetooth off, Bluetooth, Bluetooth off, mobile service on, roaming off, personal hotspot off, okay? All that stuff's off. I go into, so I want to search Google, say Google, and it comes up, yeah? Without the Wi-Fi, but this morning I wouldn't do it. For that whole period and it didn't last long probably 15 minutes maybe 20 minutes maybe 15. i think i might have got yeah i did go outside just having a look around with my torch Vinny didn't get up at all he just stayed asleep didn't care and i just couldn't figure out i thought uh-uh <laughs> What's happening? This is very strange. Well, I received. So this was, yeah, so this is, would have been, blimey, probably, let's say 20, uh, 10 past four, 10 past five rather, because I, re I received a message. What is this? Received a message at 5.44, which was after the electricity came back. It came back on about 20, 20 to 6, roughly. Power cut alert from UK power networks at 5.44. We're aware of a potential unplanned power cut affecting your area. We, don't, we do not usually contact our customers between 2300 and 0700, but we are sending this message as this number is associated to a property on our priority services or register. Not all customers will be affected by this and you may still have power. If your electricity is off, you can get live updates on the incident through our website. So... It's good that they sent it, so the text was working. I, I was actually just about to phone, because I did. I went to phone the council, because they have a out of our out of hours service, to find out what's going on, and if because they might not have known. It happened before. Uh, it's quite a few years back since it like happened. It was off for quite a while. And I called up the council. They didn't even know. And it's not really a lot they can do, to be fair, but they didn't know. So, like, oh, thanks for letting us know. I said, my pleasure. He said, what are you having for dinner? I said, well, nothing at the moment, because I can't, i got an electric cooker. He said, you should, get a, you should get gas. And you could have had your, you could have had your dinner. I said, yeah, but the gas also uses electric, doesn't it, to, to light it. Well, you could use a match, couldn't you? I said, yeah, that doesn't seem very safe these days. I don't know. I mean, that is how we used to do it in the old days. But anyway, I haven't got, I haven't got a gas cooker. I've got an electric cooker. And he said, oh, well. I said, yeah, it's all right for you to say that. I guess you obviously got a gas cooker, have you? He said, no. Well, why are you saying oh, I should have a gas cooker if you haven't got one? He said, well, I haven't got a power cut. <laughs> see ya I was like a bit rude so it came back on I'm I just have to assume it's something to do with the the weather because it was a very very stormy morning like proper proper stormy and it's been on and off all day long and it was it was 
We even had some thunder and lightning earlier uh, this afternoon. Maybe that's why Vinny's just uh, a bit because uh, of the weather and he just... Maybe he's affected by the weather. It's possible, I guess, isn't it? It's possible. Can you hear that buzzing sound? It's... I'm uploading or downloading. Download? No, uploading. No, down. Uploading. Yeah, I'm uploading a bunch of recordings onto Canva so that I can make some new videos or some old you know, archive videos. But it's coming from the hard drive and the hard drive's really like... Like really... It's pedal powered. That's amazing. It's crazy. Look, the pretty amount of space that that hard drive has. It's an external hard drive. The amount of power or space probably would have taken up multiple rooms 50 years ago. It's isn't it weird, you know? Remember floppy disk? They used to take up, there was like practically no space. Wow. So, I... This is supposed to be healing, or he, what's it called? Healing Thursday. Right. I also like to say thank you to... Oh, no. Excuse me. Oh. It's quarter past seven. It's dark outside now. Um, oh yeah, sorry. I'd like to say thank you to Emil for your PayPal gift. Thank you very much. And... In case you're wondering... Well... I don't know... So I've, I've already done kind of a what would have been a healing thursday recording a couple of days ago and i suppose in my own little way i'm kind of trying to incorporate some of that stuff into my recordings anyway and hoping that by listening to these recordings and by slowing down your mind relaxing your body it kind of gives you the chance to Get into that zone. The zone of not just letting go. Very wet mouth. Not just uh, letting go, but opening yourself up to positivity, to the possibility of change positive change just being open to options because I know how easy it can be to feel a little bit fixed sometimes, very, you know, limited, almost as if, well, there's, there's nothing I can do. And sometimes, yeah, there's, there's, there are limits, perhaps physically, there may be limits financially, there may be limits 
emotionally even. At times. But there's gaps. There's spaces. There's times. During the day. There's moments where you can allow that. That feeling of calm. To just be present inside you. And maybe to notice it. That's kind of what I'm saying really. There's something I'll always remember. I was in... Where was I? Nottingham Shire. I don't remember what time of the year it was. I think it was spring, maybe autumn. And I was sitting outside on top of a coal bunker. It wasn't high up, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get on it. But it was high enough for me to sit down and just... There was a bit of breeze coming in. It was a nice day. It wasn't warm. It wasn't hot. But it wasn't it wasn't cold. It was just a, a standard kind of day. But it was very quiet. And I just had my eyes closed... And this is probably, thinking about it, possibly late 90s. It might have been the early 2000s, but I think it was the late 90s. And I just felt so relaxed, so comfortable, so peaceful. And I became aware of a certain feeling. And it seemed to connect my body and my mind. And my brain as well. It's almost like everything was a certain feeling that connected everything together. I mean, you could say, yeah, it's your spinal cord, mate. But, you know, this without being too anatomical. It was a space, and I've talked about it in the past, almost like it's uh, like a bubble, or it's a safe room inside yourself. And when I say safe, I just mean somewhere that you're not going to be disturbed emotionally. Somewhere that you can, you're almost, you just drop your skin to the floor, and just the energy of your body walks in, or floats in even and it's just peaceful it's like it's almost like there's no body there's no thoughts there's no mind and I'm not talking really spiritual although I guess it felt a little bit like that maybe I don't know but it's more just a feeling And I got the sense that that feeling, that place, is a place of healing. I got a feeling of healing. See, little things like that really cheer me up. <laughs> Being able to rhyme stuff. A feeling of healing. But it did, it just, it felt... In fact, I would say this, 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 I don't perhaps know a word that describes the feeling. That might just be my ignorance to the English language, but you know, I know a few words. But none of those words, I feel, give justice to that. Or describe correctly that feeling. Because inside there, there was no pain, no physical pain, no emotional pain, no stress, no tension, no worries. There was 
no matter what was going on outside, it kind of didn't matter. And I've revisited that place many times, many, many times. And there was a time I did it. I mean, you may relate to what I'm saying. I don't know. If you focus inside, maybe there's a, I mean, it might be more a feeling you get when you, perhaps when you hug your child or when you've just had a really, really lovely time doing something that you enjoy. It could it could come at any different time. For me, it's more... It seems to come when I need it. So there was this time back in... 2000 and... 2011 and I was working as a counsellor but also I needed to find somewhere to live the part time job I had wasn't going so very well so this was round about probably February 2011 and I'd just seen a client and I sat down on this chair, and it was a reclining chair, but it was, it was more like a, it was a very, very comfortable, more like a kind of beach chair. I don't know why I was there, but I completely sunk into it. I, and I went into that place inside, and it wasn't because... I tried to, it just automatically happened. Almost like I needed to. Almost like you needed, you need to sometimes drop everything, let everything go for however long and just go inside, have a rest. I suppose put in trust in yourself, trust in your own ability to heal, perhaps. And it felt so good. Another time back in 2003, I was at college doing a holistic, holistic therapy course a year long course full time working part time in the evenings I didn't have hardly a minute to myself it was just all I was always working or on the course or doing massages for people you know practicing and it was a little bit too much for me and I left college one lunchtime and I just went for a walk and I came across this park, didn't know it's there. And I lay down. It was a nice day. I just lay down on the ground and just melted into the earth, basically. Not literally, but just. I went into that place inside. And I wasn't intending to do that. It just happened. But when I laid down, the earth, it almost, I don't know if anyone gets this, sometimes when I touch, when I'm, you know, when I'm touching the earth, you know, the ground rather, I've laid down on the ground or even touched a tree. They don't call me a tree hugger, but there's an energy there that I feel. I've never hugged a tree. I've kissed a few, 
but I've never, you know, held hands, been on dates, but it's something about being close to the the earth, the actual earth itself, not the planet, but, you know, the ground. And a tree is more in contact with the earth than pretty much anything. I say the tree, there's more than one I know. And I remember just laying down, looking at the sky to start with, watching the clouds go by. And closing my eyes. It just felt so relaxing. So peaceful. I didn't want to open my eyes. I just... I wanted to stay in that feeling. But at the same time, it took no effort to be in that feeling. It's almost like... I felt a little bit like I fell into it. Like it was just there. I had no choice but to go into that healing. Because it was time. My body needed it or my mind needed it. Or maybe both. And it was the f it felt like the first bit of relaxation that I had experienced for a long time. It's weird though when I think about it now even. It relaxes me. Hmm. Yeah. It's just a feeling. But it feels like a safe feeling. To me, it feels like a healing feeling. That also rhymes, doesn't it? So it's just kind of like, oh. Because I think when your body, your mind, your brain, maybe your nervous system, everything's kind of on the same page, in touch with that feeling of calm and comfort. And it can only be a good thing. It can only be a positive thing, useful healthy yeah I just thought I'd mention it because I've talked about it a few times not usually with the let me boy to sleep because this is uh, one of those healing Thursdays I wonder if Everybody's got a different feeling. Maybe you have a different way of doing it. Perhaps it's... Maybe you don't need to close your eyes. Maybe you do close your eyes and it just happens naturally. Or perhaps you hadn't noticed it before and it's always been there. Maybe... You're just used to it being there. 
and you automatically go into that feeling and perhaps possibly hadn't given it much thought especially connecting it with healing your body healing your mind because I generally think that anything that calms my mind down calms my body down is it's a healing feeling I think that's going to be the title of this recording a healing feeling but it is it's, it feels right it feels very easy and I guess some people might think when they listen to me that there can't be a lot going on inside my head or why would I need to slow my brain down? Surely I need to, to speed it up. Speed, speed my thoughts up because I'm so slow. But I'll have you know. Yeah, you're probably right actually. No, it's, it's, it's not just about the speed of your thoughts. It's the content. Which is probably more important. What's the substance? What's the... Are they negative thoughts? Are they positive thoughts? Because we don't necessarily want to slow down. Well, you might do, but... If it was just positive thoughts going around in your head... It wouldn't be such an issue, possibly. I say possibly, because I can't really speak for everyone. I'm not sure how often I have been negatively affected by a positive thought. Do you know? By thinking about something that's good that's going to happen, I generally don't have the feeling of negativity connected to that. I mean, I suppose, you know, there can be times when whatever the feelings are can be a little bit too much. You just need to maybe, some people get overexcited. Doesn't happen to me too often. It can happen. And in the past, it sometimes led, I had such lovely feelings and then it leads to panic because it's kind of, I guess I'm moving towards mania and it gets a little bit too much. But generally feeling nice is a good thing, isn't it? I don't think uh, negative thoughts have really ever made me feel good. I know it's like an obvious statement, like, really? You're telling me when you're thinking negative things towards yourself that it doesn't put you in a good mood? Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah, I know. But I find sometimes being around other people who are feeling emotionally negative has an effect on me 
and I try not to let it. But it's because, okay. I do work on positivity. I work on it. I work on trying to stay positive. That's one of the issues I've had in my life. And been the opposite to that, I mean. So that's that's what I've been working on for since the late nineties. Been trying to work on that and trying to stay upbeat, but at the same time also you know, being in touch with how I'm feeling. I'm not walking around pretending that I'm feeling something I'm not. But at the same time, trying to get in touch with the nice feelings. The, you know, something to look forward to. Something to be grateful for. Those things. Which, and none of that, none of this stuff is my idea. But it does work. It's very... I think it would be very difficult to feel grateful and to feel hateful at the same time. Oh, I'm loving these rhymes. Blimey. Grateful and hateful. The, the two don't go together, do they? Can't be grateful and hateful. So... If we can positive, if we, if we can think about something that we're grateful for, and it brings up feelings of gratitude, we already know, don't we, that when we focus on something negative, it brings up negative emotions. When I mean, everybody knows that, because we've all done it, I've done it loads of times used to be my favourite hobby. I didn't realise it was harming me and other people around me, I guess, as well, emotionally. So... Well, he's making some weird noise. I've never seen... He's got hiccups while he's asleep. That is so cute. I didn't know anyone could hiccup when they were asleep. He's literally hiccuping. How weird, it's not waking him up. Very strange. Hmm. Hey, I'm right. It's really weird that the hiccup stopped and then he woke up. You are so pretty. Yes, you are. He's still asleep. He's got up and looked around, but he's still asleep. Honestly, just... Um, he might be a little bit under the weather because he spends so much time indoors. Indoors, in the bedroom. Because he's normally... I mean, you know, we don't go out all the time, but he's normally in here with me. Usually. He spends some time on his own, but he normally spends time with me. But today, he hasn't wanted to. Can you imagine how good it would be to be a dog, though? You know, they go to... They, they just go to sleep and enjoy being asleep, don't they? So I suppose the question I do have 
for you is is there a place that you go to inside uh, a feeling because uh, I I remember reading somewhere where it was a therapy book or some some kind of book we got surrounded by that kind of topic and they said oh don't use the word safe space don't use safe space because that could be like construed as being a negative thing but to me it's not about going somewhere it's not about um, disassociating yourself that's not what it's about. It's not disassociation. That's this. If anything, it's the opposite to that. It's bringing everything together. Connecting your mind, your brain, your emotions, your body. Connecting everything together. So that you're, you know, at one as it were. Sounds very esoteric, but maybe you already have your own place that you go to uh, internally in your mind. Perhaps it's a, you feel it in a part of your body. Maybe you feel it in your mind. Maybe you feel it actually, literally in your head. Perhaps you, you notice that your hands relax. Your feet relax. Which is a sign that your mind is relaxed. Perhaps when your mind is relaxed you... Notice that your stomach is loose. Another sign maybe is if you've got your eyes closed. Maybe sometimes I feel it in my eyes. Almost when I got my eyes closed. <laughs> Finney's now deciding to give himself a little bath. So little bit of sound in the background with my eyes closed I look up you know with my eyes my eyelids shut I look up a bit and there's a feeling I get I don't strain I'm not like doing all my energy to look up it's just gently looking up you know there's no prizes I'm not going to win win a balloon but just looking up gently And there's a certain feeling that I get when I do that. A gentleness. And what I like about relaxing is how the breathing automatically slows down. And I've come, you know, really with the relaxation and stuff, I've come from a different direction to a lot of recordings that you may listen to or you may have heard. I don't focus really on the breathing. The reason for that is because when I started doing this, I was trying to help myself with my uh, anxiety. And when I focused on my breathing, it was it was the last thing I wanted to focus on, to be honest. So I found a different way in. By focusing on my mind, by focusing on different physical parts. But I noticed that as your body relaxes, your mind relaxes. The more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes, you know, standard. But there's a calmness in your brain as well. 
and the breathing slows down. Because all this physical stuff, that's all controlled by your brain, isn't it? Like, it's automatic. So when your breathing slows down, it just shows you that the, the relaxation of your body and the slowing down of your mind has actually had a physical effect on your brain. And if your brain is affected, your spinal cord is also affected. And so is your nervous system. So if your body is affected in a way that slows down and becomes more relaxed, it just has that roll-on effect that calms other parts of your body. I think it's quite nice actually. Very windy today. I don't mind a little bit of wind, to be honest. <laughs> I like a bit of wind. It's, I don't know, it's, I just, I like nature. I like just, I quite like nature. I'm not a huge fan of rain. You know, I think it, it should be, it should rain between two and four every day and then just be bright for the rest of the day. You know, just have lots of rain between two and four. But uh, it's not realistic, is it? It's not realistic, Vinny. No, it isn't. He's just had a sausage. He's very happy. Aren't you, Vin? You are happy. You are a happy little girl, aren't you? Yes, you are. Just had a sausage. Say sausages. Say sausages. So I'm going to go. It doesn't feel like I've been talking for very long, but. If you're listening to this. And it's a 10 hour recording, then it will be. A long recording, obviously. Calm down, Vinny, calm down. He's very excited now. Now he's at his sausage. He's absolutely invigorated. He's f full of energy, aren't you? Hey? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember, tomorrow is Q&A Friday. Please only listen. I've already done that. Why am I doing a please only listen when you can safely close your eyes? I said that at the beginning, didn't I? I hope I did. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love.